just a little bit with you, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكَرَ تَنْفَعِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind the brothers and the sisters. Indeed, reminding brothers and sisters, it will be beneficial. So I don't have a lot of knowledge. It's not like I'm here to come and show off. No, I'm just here to share with you a little bit what I have. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we heard from good and from the Quran of the Hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are asking our brothers and sisters to take care of them. <coughs> Applying what you learn, it's better than gather a lot of knowledge that you don't use. Even if you hear from our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one hadith or one just one verse, working with it is better for you than having hundreds of ayat or a hadith you have them and you don't work with them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those people who they have the knowledge and they don't work with it, it's like donkeys who are carrying books of knowledge and they don't worry about them. So today what I want to share with you brothers, it's a very big issue that some brothers, they don't consider it like it's a problem. It's the issue of debt credit issues, brothers. It's a very big issue that we have today, especially with this, these economic problems. A lot of people, they cannot afford to rent, and also they can even not afford to buy houses. So they are engaging in doing mortgage, and so mortgage which is haram to do it. Some of them are haram. The credit cards, it's a very big issue. So this is what I want to share with my brothers and sisters to do the best we can, how we can use them. And لازمة. So dear brothers and sisters, one of the taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommend us in those three ayat that every Jum'ah, every Jum'ah, they our Imam said the recite for us, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullah. Fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah. Because there's nothing going to benefit you if you pass away. It is not the fear of Allah. So fear Allah. So one of the taqwa, one of the form of taqwa, it's for you to take care of any type of, any type of death, whatever that you have on your neck. Take care of them, my brothers. That is between you and your dear brothers and sisters. So take care of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the day of judgment, He is not going to forgive whatever you have between you and your Muslim sister or brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you whatever you have between you and Him. Any sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He will forgive it to you, except shirk. Any type of sins you do, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can forgive you or He can hold you accountable for that, except shirk. Shirk, He said, He's not going to forgive you. So any type of sins you have between you and your Muslim brothers and sisters, you have to take care of them before you pass away. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is not going to forgive you that. It's between you and your brothers and sisters. What you have between you and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive it to you. So dear brothers and sisters, the issue of that, it's very, very, very big issue that you have in these days. So if you have any credit, or you take any money from any person, do the best you can to pay it off. Do the best you can if you can pay it off before it will be too late. Because if you pass away, it can be too late. So do the best you can to take care of it before it's going to be too late. Having a lot of debt is not a good sign. If you know you don't have nothing to say to pay it. So only take what you know you can pay and what you know that you need it. Do not engage yourself in a lot of credit issues. It's very dangerous. 
this hadith that I'm, I'm trying to share with you, it will show us how the issue of that is very issue is very big, big. In this hadith, this companion, Jabir ibn Abdullah, and Jabir ibn Abdullah, he wrote to Allah, and he said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يصلي على رجل مات وعليه دين فأتي بميت فقال عليه دين فقالوا نعم ديناران فقالوا فقال صلوا على صاحبكم فقال أبو قتادة الأنصاري هما علي يا رسول الله قال فصلى عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلما فتح الله فلما فتح الله على رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أنا أولى بكل مؤمن من نفسي من ترك دينا فعليه القضاء ومن ترك مالا فلورثته In this hadith, the, this companion Jabir ibn Abdullah he is telling us our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to He's not going to pray on any bad debt that they bring in front of him if the person has some debt on him. If you have any credit and the person pass away, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let them pray on your body. And then he said one time, they bring one person who passed away and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, that this person has any credit on any debt? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, he has only two dinar. Let's say that two dollars. Two dollars on his neck. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, go ahead and pray on your brother. And then one companion stood up. His name is Abu Qatada al-Ansari. He said, I am going to take care of these two dinars, two dinar, Ya Prophet, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pray on his body. So at the beginning, any person pass away and you have some dirt on your neck, he doesn't pray on you. But later on, when Allah subhanahu wa taala made everything easy to our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he migrated from Mecca to Medina. He has something in his hand. Any person who pass away, he say he will say that I'm going to take care of his death because I worry more about the believers than themselves on themselves. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so merciful. Anyone pass away now, I will take care of his death. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ مَالًا فَلِ وَرَثَتِي But anyone who pass away, if the person has some money, it is for the people who will inherit him. <coughs> so, please, let's try to see what we have in this hadith. We have a lot in this hadith. If we try to see, just try to pick up four, only four points from this hadith. The first one, if you have any credit on your neck, if you pass away, you are preventing your, your own self to get the dua of the believers. See, even if the first time Prophet doesn't even pray on your back, because of the credit that you have, Prophet doesn't pray on your back. And you know any Muslim who said La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, the person does not make shit. If Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks Allah to forgive you, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive you. Because of the credit, at the beginning he will say that he's not going to pray on you. So you see how serious it is. And even the top the believers, the top the believers, maybe it's not going to benefit you if you have credit, because you have to pay them. And the second, the second point is one of, it may be a sign of hypocrisy. If Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turn away from your body, this, it may be a sign of hypocrisy. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in Surah Al Tawbah, do not pray on any one, any body of them. That means the hypocrites. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the companions, they said, he, they used to look. If they bring a bad daddy, a, a person who passed away, if he turned away, they may think that this person is a hypocrite. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, do not pray on any of those hypocrites. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he's not going to forgive them. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, even if you ask me to forgive, to forgive them 70 times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm not going to forgive those hypocrites. So it may be a sign of hypocrisy. So let's do, do the best we can. Credit is a very, very big issue. And then also, the third point, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very merciful towards the believers. See, if you don't have money, if you pass away, he will say that I'm going to take care of your death. But if you have money, this is for the people who are going to inherit you. And then the fourth point, dear brothers and sisters, this hadith also will teach us how to be kind among us. We need to be very merciful and kind between us. If you know that your brother or your sister, he passed away or she passed away, he has some debt and their family, they don't have nothing to take care of it. Please, brothers, let's try to come back a community to try to save this brother who passed away. This one of the examples that Abu Qatada, he did. He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm going to take care of this two dinars that that person had. I'm going to pay them off. And he did. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed him. So if you know from your family, all the friends in the same masjid, you know that a person passed away, the person has some credit, so let's try to free him. Okay? Let's try to come together to pay whatever the person has to pay. It's very, very good. If a person passes away among your family or among inside the community, let's try to ask anybody if he takes any credit from any person. And let's try to come together. Let's try to be merciful toward our brother, to help his family. Maybe his family that have nothing to pay his credit. The issue of credit is very, very, very dangerous, dear brothers. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha, she said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كان يدع في الصلاة ويقول اللهم إني أعوذ بك من المأثم والمغرم فقال له فقال له قائل ما أكثر ما تستعيذ من المغرم يا رسول الله فقال إن الرجل إذا ظلم حدث فكذب ووعد فأخلف متفق عليه أو المغر عائشة رضي الله عنها she said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to ask Allah a lot in his prayer. He will say, Oh Allah, inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'thami wal magram Oh Allah, I seek protection from you. I'm asking you to help me to don't be sinful, to don't be a sinner and a person who has death. Allah protect me from being a sinner and a person who has a lot of death on his neck. And then one person asking him, Oh Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I see that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you a lot for being in debt. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm doing this because you see a person, if the person has a lot of credit on his neck, you will see that he won't speak, but he will lie. You will come and ask him, brother, when can I get my money? He will tell you tomorrow. He may talk a lot, but maybe in that person, whatever he's saying, that he knows that he's lying. He doesn't have it. If he doesn't have a taqwa, he will just keep lying to you. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if he, he gave you a promise, he will tell you to come, let's meet here in this masjid, inshallah, I'm going to give to you. He will break his promise. To any person who has a lot of debt, sometimes they will, they will even flee away from those, the person who they have to pay them. Prophet said, a person who has a lot of, any time he speaks, he will speak and he will lie. And he will never feel his promise. And these two signs, they are one of the big signs of hypocrisy. Prophet said the, the signs of hypocrisy are three. 
and these two halves are two of them. When he speaks, he lies. You give him a promise, he doesn't keep his promise. And if you give him any amana, he will betray you. Just why? Because of having a lot of credit. So do not think that those credits is between only you and the Muslim brothers. Even if the person is not Muslim, or even if it's from a company. So you have to be careful. Credit is a credit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whatever you have between you and the human, human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not his, uh, his mother. He doesn't care. You are Muslim or you are not a Muslim. If you pass away, he will get between us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the just. He is not going to wrong no one. Muslim or not Muslim. So let's do the best we can. Whatever we have between us, dear brothers and sisters, we have to do the best we can to take care of our credit. It's very, very dangerous. That is very serious. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Before we continue, for brothers, we can try to move and squeeze a little bit to come to uh, forward for our brothers who will come late. So that would be easy for them to sit down, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala al-mabrut rahmatan lil alameen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ayyuhal nas, ittaqu Allah haqqa taqwa wa alamu rahmatun Allah jami'an anna man mata wa lam yu'addi ma alayhi min al-duyun bi anna ruhaku mu'allaqatun Dear brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us. And let's try to bear in mind, put it in your mind, any person who passes away and the person has some credit in his neck, inside his grave, his soul is not in peace yet. His soul, it would be put in hold. For a lot of mercies, a lot of brothers we will do for the person. His hope will be in hold. And he will be punished inside his grave. You are not a mushrik. You pray, you fast, you did the hajj, but because of the death, your soul will be put in hold. Until they can pay it off. Why? We have in this hadith here, there is one person who came and asked our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I have a brother, okay, that my brother passed away, wa alayhi daynun, faqala huwa, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, huwa mahbusun bi dayni, that person, he will be tied, he will be whole, because of his death, your brother. And the Prophet said, Go and pay off his debt. He said, Oh Prophet, I pay whatever I have to pay. Whatever person owes me pay them. Except for just one, one dinar. And this dinar, it's a woman who came and claimed it. Prophet said, Go and pay it. That you know, if a person, any person who has it, you took credit from another person and you have it, you can pay it. Just for that person to come and ask you, anytime you can pay the person, he can go and and take rest. You, you don't want to pay him. This one is a doom also. This is an oppression. Do not oppress. A bull. And Prophet Sallallahu said, فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمَ ظُلْمَاتِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Oppression is the type of an oppression. Darkness in the day of judgment. You have it. I take two dollars from my brother. I have it. I have hundred dollars. I have two hundred dollars. Anytime my brother come and ask him, 
he asked ask me, I will tell him, come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this one is an operation. You oppress that person, don't do it. You take anything from the brothers, pay them if you have it. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one time he was sitting inside his masjid. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Subhanallah, 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 three times. And all the companions, they get scared. They get up. They couldn't even ask him. Because they, they saw how serious our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. And then the next day, they asked him, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he was saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, three times yesterday, because of a very, very serious matter would just come down to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him about it. فَسَعَلُهُ عَنْ فَقَالْ Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Addain, that, Addain, Addain, Addain. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي لَوْ أَنَّ رَجُلًا قُتِلَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أُحْيَا ثُمَّ قُتِلْ ثُمَّ أُحْيَا ثُمَّ قُتِلْ وَعَلَيْهِ دَيْنٌ مَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى يُقَضَى عَنْهُ دَيْنٌ Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ يَلِي I swear by Allah, in whose hand my soul is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who controls our soul. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He is swear by Allah. If a person went to fight for this, uh, to do jihad, during jihad fi sabilillah, you become a martyr in that battle. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if Allah gave you life again, you're going back again to fight for the sake of Allah. You become a shaheed. And then a third time, Allah will give you life back again. You can become a martyr again. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he swear by Allah, ma dakhul al-jannah. Wallahi, that person is not going to enter in Jannah unless they pay off his debt. And we know the shaheed, the benefit which is a shaheed will get when he passes away. So right away, before even his blood come out, Prophet sallallahu said in one hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even him, he will forgive 70 people from his family. 70 persons from his family, not even him. So forget about him. Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive him already. And 70 persons of his family who may enter in Jahannam, Allah will forgive them. So because of one dollar or one code of credit you took from a person, you didn't pay it, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi, that person is not going to enter Jahannam unless you pay off. So unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it from your own good deed and give to that person. And the person may be company, he may be a non-Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it from the good deed and give it to the those person. So it's very, very, very serious, dear brothers. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من أخذ أموال الناس يريد أداءها أداء أدى الله عنه ومن أخذها يريد إخلافها أطلقه الله. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said any person who come and take the money of people, you come and take credit from people, and then in your intention you know yourself better than anyone else. You know that you can pay it. You have a good idea, good intention to pay it off. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to pay it off. But if you have bad intention, you just want to come and misuse their money, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this money. You cannot be able to pay it off. You have bad niyyah. You don't want to pay it. You just want to come and get your money and do whatever you want without paying off. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it very hard for you to pay off. So what I'm going to advise my dear brothers and sisters, 
if you want to take any credit, take it what you know that you need it. Just because you, some people offer you a credit line or some brother come and tell you, I want to give you this hundred thousand dollars, and you know that you cannot use it. Say, Jazakum la khayran. I cannot take it. Take it only if you need it. Do not take it if you don't need it. If you are not in need, well, that's help yourself. You, you never know when that will come to you. And the second advice I have to my brother, from my brothers, have your own will under your pillow. Write down whatever you have between you and the brothers. If you pass away, at least your family, they have the record. They will go to those people and pay them. Inform your wife, your mother, your father, I take $100 from this brother, or I take $20,000 from this company. If you have businesses, have everything written down to make it easy for your own self. Because it's very, very dangerous. For you to be a good Muslim, a good believer, if you pass away, you have that Prophet said, you know go to enter Jannah unless everything is bailed. So how about you take credit from some people? Huh? And then they don't even know. Your family is a great you know. And Prophet said, you will be punished by your grave. So all this one, it's when it's happening in the halal way. So how about those people who take haram credit? It's very dangerous. Riba, it's very, very, very dangerous. This one is what is happening in the halal way. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhadadina manu ida tadayantu bidaynin. So that means we know that having credit between us, it's okay, it's halal to do it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warn us against riba. Riba, it's very, very dangerous. It's one of the seven sins that the Prophet said will destroy you. So you stay away from riba. Any company offer you, even if it's a billion dollar, if they said they're going to add one penny on top of that billion dollar, well, they do not take it to the riba. And if you know riba, eating just one penny of riba is like you have an intercourse with your own mom, your own mother. Well, like if it looked like you did 36 fornication. So you stay away from Moriba. Any interest, you stay away from it. It doesn't matter. The person, uh, the person that they can say, even if it's one person, 0, 0, 0, 0.1, what I do not take it. It's haram, it's haram. So you stay away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take it easy for us. Okay. And that's why to help each us. A lot of brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with the business, they have companies. If you see your Muslim brother, they are struggling, do not wait until they can come and ask you. If you see a sign that they need help, so best way to help them. Before they go to those companies, who can overcharge them. Best way to come together. For life, you may put some joy in your Muslim brother one time, that may be the reason for you to enter Jannah. All the prayers and the hacks that you did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept them. But the only one time that you come and make it easy for your Muslim brother or sister, that may be the reason for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. If a person has credit, you say, how much do you have to pay? He tells you like a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, you give it to him, I swear by Allah, that person, he will relax. Because having credit, it's very heavy on your neck. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Any person who is sick, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal him. Our mothers and our sisters and our brothers who pass away, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our children, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to protect our children. Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi asma'ika al-husna wa sifatika al-ula. 
حتى تجعلنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هما الا فرجته ولا دينا الا قضيته ولا مريضا الا شفيته ولا عيبا الا سترته ولا قربا الا نقصته ولا مجاهدا الا نصرته ولا عدوا الا خذلته اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا يا رب العالمين اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا يا رب العالمين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا على النار اللهم اعتك رقابنا من النار اللهم اعتك رقابنا من النار ورقاب ابائنا وامهاتنا ولجميع المؤمنين والمسلمين من النار يا رب العالمين اللهم ربي اولادنا يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب اولادنا يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظهم يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد كونوا الى صلاتكم وكونوا من بعد